The week of the Jen Shaw sentencing is here. And Lisa and Lenny are getting messier, we fear. Virtual reality. Hi, I'm Danny. I'm Evan. And it is a very shocking week for Housewives fans. Well, I guess not super shocking. Well, the answer to what's going to happen is going to be kind of shocking because Evan, I don't know how much time Jen is going to get, but we're going to find out tomorrow. I am on the edge of my seat. I am so looking forward to what the outcome of her sentencing will be, just because I feel like we've waited so long. It's gotten rescheduled. It's gotten pushed back. And now we're finally here. And I don't know. Like, I don't know what to anticipate. Will she get her time cut? Will she get more time than she thought she was going to get? It's really, I don't know. It's like, it's so up in the air. And I, I also wonder, like, once the eight years or 11 years or 14 years, whatever she gets is over, will Salt Lake City still be around? And will there be this like grand Jen Shaw comeback? There's just so much about my mind is racing. Wait, I didn't even think of that, but I am very curious about that because like we said, yes, it got moved so much. It used to be on Meredith's birthday in December. It's now January. And a lot of people are thinking she's going to get around eight to 10 years. And it's kind of crazy too. On top of that, next week, the season finale of Salt Lake City is when she goes to give her guilty plea. Any problem? Any problem at all? The likelihood of her being found guilty is very high. Are you gonna go to jail for 11 years? After telling everybody all season that she's innocent. The timing is is so weird. It is just like, I don't know, the, the, the stars are aligning, I mean, not for Jen, but, but oh for us Bravo fans for sure. Well, Jen's lawyer and the investigators that were on this case have some free time. Can I please ask them to look into Heather Gay's black eye? Because I want, I want my answers. Oh my God, you look like somebody like clocked you. Maybe somebody did. If someone did this to her in this group, like that's a problem. I, I want an answer too. Like it's just so, it's honestly as a viewer, it is so frustrating, but I will say the one theory, there's many theories and conspiracies out there about what happened. The one that I am sort of inclined to believe is that it was a bad injection from Beauty Lab and Laser. Faces by Bravo, uh, Steven, the, the guy who runs that account, who's who's so great, and he actually is a nurse. So he's kind of like in the, the medical world. So he, he knows what to look for. He noticed in different parts of the first episode when it became a thing that the bruise like was slowly forming and so it just makes sense that it would fully set in by the time that it set in and she did say the person she's trying to protect is herself aka her brand sometimes we wear a patch sometimes we let it all out sometimes we sweep it under the rug why do you not want to talk about it who are you trying to protect myself and that's why she's not saying it because now this is this is all theory. I'm just theorizing. This is not factual. But I think that maybe she just didn't want to admit that it was a bad injection from Beauty Lab and Laser because then it's like, oh, Beauty Lab and Laser is a place where you get black eyes. You know what I mean? I don't know. What do you think? Okay, I thought it was a, a shocking punch. We're still unsure about what happened to my eye. There's theories. I'm trying to figure out what is Heather saying without actually saying it. What would you say, CSI? Because she keeps looking to Jen to ask Jen what happened to her eye, which makes me feel like Jen, in fact, had something to do with the black eye. I kind of, thought, and not for any, you know, people love, a, they love their wine and the tequila. I thought, you know, girls will be girls. They were having a fun little like humping moment, boobs out moment. I thought maybe one little swing too far. But the annoying thing is that there's so much speculation because we don't know. And I think it's frustrating the cast and the viewers and everything like that. And Heather did say like, wait until you read the book. If it's not in the book, Heather, Heather, you know us and we love you. I'm gonna just call you and find out. <laughs> yeah, we, we will riot if it's not included in Bad Mormon, uh, which I can't wait to read by the way. I can't either. But speaking of things that were included, you were included on this recent episode. Can you walk us through what the event was like in person and how it felt to be on the editing room of Bravo? Like you, they were they were chopping you up. Yeah, well, I, I didn't expect to make it into the episode. First of all, I wasn't mic'd or anything, so I don't know how they got my voice so clear. I guess I was standing close enough to Seth because my shining moment was complimenting Seth on his very like chic mullet-esque new haircut. Thank you. It's cool. I like it. I thought he looked handsome. 
system and I just had to let them know and they decided to include that little tidbit but we were there for Meredith's charity event for the ADR foundation which her sister Myra created with her son Alex who went through some mental health struggles and so they were there to raise money and awareness for people going through similar challenges and it was actually I know there was a lot of drama that played out with all you know the girls chit-chatting here and chit-chatting there and SECs and this and that but it was actually a super super emotional night and what you didn't see was this like very touching, heartwarming, yet heartbreaking speech given by Myra and Alex about how he overcame the struggles that he overcame. There was literally not a dry eye in the house. I am surprised that my spray tan was still intact by the end of the episode. Um, but yeah, it, it was a super, super fun night, but it was really interesting to watch it all play back on the episode uh, because I didn't know any of that stuff was going on. There that was so funny. Was, there yeah, were that's... some murmurs about the black eye. At, at the event, I will say that. And so now it's just so interesting to see like everything play out as it has played out. Did you see that Meredith said she is actively trying to get Mary Cosby back on the show? Stop it. Yeah, a, a, there was someone on Instagram who was like, can you please do your best to bring Mary back? And please, M M uh, Meredith. She said that she's working on it. So- And I feel Bravo would let her come back. I I think so too. I think so too. I mean, what, like, other than like allegedly running a cult, like, what did she do? And she didn't show up to the reunion. Okay. So, like, there are some, she has some offenses under her belt, but I feel like we as Bravo fans, uh, and, you know, uh, such a big portion of the Bravo fandom loves Mary Cosby so much. Like, bring her back. Like, I'm ready to like get back to church. Uh, as, you know, as, as, yeah, as Miranda said to Big, bring our girl home. Bring our girl home. We want our, I don't think this next housewife is going to be coming back anytime soon. Cause I think she's kind of moved on as kind of like in her glowing era, but what's going on with Bronwyn and her relationship? She confused me. I think she confused a lot of people. Yeah, you, you never know what's going on really with Bronwyn. Basically, at the start of the year, she and her girlfriend, Jennifer Spinner, they exchanged promise rings to okay. kick off 2023. Very Jonas Brothers, okay. Very Jonas Brothers, but I, I don't know if it's that kind of promise, you know what I'm saying? Like, she, she is a girl who loves to have sex multiple times a day, as she has said in the past, and power to her. I, I love that. Oh, but shout out to the stamina. <laughs> Yes. She and Jennifer exchanged promise rings and she sparked some engagement rumors, but she cleared it up. They're not engaged. It's, it's nothing more than a promise ring. But maybe even more meaningful than a promise ring is that the girls are going all over the South looking for a forever home for, for the family. Bronwyn wants to find a place to raise her younger kids because she, she has seven children. She wants to find a place to raise her younger kids in the South with Jennifer and she was actually looking in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is where I'm from. And I know that they're looking in Georgia, they're looking in Tennessee, but I hope that they land on a place in Wilmington because I I envision a future where I'm like inviting Bronwyn and Jennifer over for like Thanksgiving dinner. Oh. Like I, just, I love the idea of that. Wait, I really love that idea. And I think, I feel like she would, I feel like between those places, because I don't think she's from any of those areas. So if you just tell her, girl, I'll hang out with you here. She'd be like, all right, let's do it. Well, I mean, she did reach out and she was like, is Wilmington queer friendly? Because, you know, it's it's the South and you just kind of wor worry and wonder about those things. And I I told her, look, I survived and we have a pop and gay club oh. with drag performances. So, so she'll host it, bingo there. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. Bronwyn hosted drag bingo at Ibiza. And a shout out to Ibiza. I literally was raised in that club. Um, I can I can see it. And I hope it happens. I'm glad your nightlife at Ibiza in North Carolina was, I hope, a little more drama-free than that time Lisa and Lenny accidentally ran into each other at F1, because I still need to talk about that video. What are you doing, Lisa? Of her filming and the lick lick thing. That really set Lisa over the edge. And I understand why. It was kind of intense. And I love that the mother-in-law like is now like team Lisa. I'm kind of obsessed with their bonding. Oh my God. Yeah. The, I never expected that to happen because I recently re-binged the first three seasons of Miami Housewives and Lisa and the mother-in-law used, they were not vibing. They were not cool. So it's really amazing to see how close they've gotten as uh, her marriage to Lenny crumbled and all this Ooh. crazy stuff played out. But yeah, that video, I'm so glad that Lisa released it. Did she release it herself? Did she? She posted, I, I want to say she posted it and then 
like kind of, and then I know she 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 sent it all around. I know she was like DMing it to people. No, no matter how it made its way uh, onto the internet, I'm glad that it did because I was just so curious about what that nightclub showdown with Larsa and Lenny and Katarina looked like, and the fact that the lick, <laughs> the the lick, that, the Diana Jenkins mo move, yeah. Very, very Diana Jenkins, mm -hmm. but almost a little less graceful than Diana Jenkins, because I will say at least like with Diana Jenkins, like the, the licking of the lips looks so natural, you know, maybe may odd, but at least natural. Mm -hmm. With Katharina, it was just giving like super awkward, weird and creepy, like almost like horror film vibes. It was very like. <laughs> She's in Megan, that new movie. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was so weird. It was, it was really, really awkward and very strange. And I'm glad that we got the receipts because it was, it was kind of a weird thing to, for Elisa to say, not for Elisa to say, but just like a, a weird thing for someone to do when she said like, all she did was lick her lips at me. I'm like, really? Cause that just seems like, like only a weirdo would do that. But here we go. That... She was licking her lips with her leftovers. All right. Shout out, shout yeah. out to that, I guess. And Maybe Lenny though... likes it. Maybe he does, but what he doesn't like, I think, is the fact that I'm pretty sure everybody is Team Lisa because he went out on Instagram kind of alluding to the fact that, like, Lisa was, like, abusive in their relationship and all these, like, you guys don't know the real Lisa when it's like, I, I think we know the real Lenny, though, and we don't care about you, so why don't you just sit down, finalize this divorce, and be a grown-up? For what? Like, doesn't he have a body to operate on? Like, why is he like <laughs> trolling people on Instagram and trying to like, I don't know, save his reputation in Instagram comments? It's giving weird. Like, it's honestly very, very strange. What I do care about is what everybody thinks Jen Shaw will get served with. Yeah. I'm curious. Yeah. L like, let us know because I would love to just hear everyone's guesses. Like, do you think she could like get it down to three i know that's what she wants or do you think like i don't know like i honestly don't know how the law works or how sentencing works we need meredith to come back on the show for this but like could they give her like more time like i don't know like how it works out like could she come to court in like a bad outfit or have a bad attitude and the judge is like i don't like what i'm seeing you're not getting 14 you're getting 28 Ooh. i don't know if she can she comes in the little leprechaun hat she's getting 30 years <laughs> like, from the fashion police too yeah 30 100%. added on to that yeah but yeah let us know